Good afternoon. And happy Sabbath. Um, yeah, the message that I have to sort of give this, the Lord has given me to give this morning, is one that um, over the past few, you can say few weeks, the Lord has been placing it upon my heart. Um, and it's, um, I think what the Lord has kind of shown me, and you know, if you've probably heard this before, forgive me. <laughs> um, and um, as Paul, as Peter said, he says he would not be negligent in reminding you of this one thing, even though you are steadfast in present truth. And we do indeed have a more sure word of prophecy. Um, but, you know, the Lord really kind of like honed into my mind what it actually means to receive his word. And I'm going to share that with you this this morning by God's grace. This is going to have a quick word of prayer before we start. <sighs> Loving Father, truly it is a privilege to be before your people to minister. And I'm asking, Father, that self at this time will truly be crucified. And that nothing else but Jesus shall be brought forth and your way. And may hearts be edified and drawn closer to you, have a closer walk, and know what it is to receive you. This I humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading, and I, I would like to urge you to, if you can, just try not to just refer to the, the screen. If you can, look in your Bibles also, in terms of receiving the text, so that you're, you're actually functionally finding things and you're not just relying upon the Word. And also, they talk about double digging. You know, you're kind of like, you know, just checking up on the word that it's being ministered that it's, uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, so the word, the word. It says in Psalms 119 verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I may not sin against you by word have I hid that word hide you know it's like I think about like a you know a, a, a closet somebody has a wardrobe they've got clothes in their wardrobe at some stage you're going to see some of their wardrobe I mean, you may even if you see them often enough you'll probably see all of their wardrobe and then some people have some things in their wardrobe that they never take out but the point is that at some stage, given the situation arising, you will see what's in that closet. Before then, before that person puts it on, you won't see what's in that closet. And it's kind of like the same thing with our thoughts. The same thing with our thoughts. So, you could call the brain or the mind the closet. And as you put your clothes on or you put your words on, people see what your words are. Okay? So, I have a range of questions to ask. The Word of God. Question. How are thoughts produced? How are thoughts produced? Okay? Now, I'm going to get all the questions up and then I'm going to put, I'm going to, Ask the questions again and see if you can, you know, give the answers that I've actually put down here. The next question is, what are thoughts made up of? What do our thoughts produce? And so, this produces a... Which establishes a... 
which determines the... So these are the questions, okay? All right, now, how are thoughts produced? Tell me. How are they... And I'm talking about the nitty-gritty here. I'm not talking about, like, uh, necessarily receiving information as such at this juncture. How are thoughts produced? Any answers? Words. Words. Emotions. Sorry? Emotions. emotions. So the emotions produce your thoughts, would you say? Think about that one. We were told by the spirit of prophecy that the mind's influenced by holy angels and evil angels. Okay. They're influenced, but in order for the thoughts to be generated, there has to be influence to bring the thoughts on. What produces the thought? That's the question I'm asking. Brain. The brain. Now you're getting hotter. <laughs> you're getting hotter. Warmer still. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to the chase. Right. So, chemicals. Chemicals. Now, brother Boris was speaking earlier on, talking about synapses. Okay. Now, synapses in the brain are how thoughts are produced. They're chemicals. Okay? Your thoughts are chemicals. They're, they're actually established by the action of uh, uh, nerves working together. Okay? We're going to move on. We're gonna, let, me, let me get through this. Sorry. Any questions towards the end, if, 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 if you please? Um, right, so chemicals and substances. These are the things that produce our thoughts. Okay? What are, what are thoughts made up of? The answer, somebody mentioned it earlier on. Words. Thoughts are made up of words. And if you think about it, as you think, words are making up your thoughts. Okay? Even when you're writing something down, as you're writing... The words hit your mind first before they go to the pen. Right? What do, the, what do our thoughts produce? Actions. It may not be an outward action. It could be an action that's internal. Okay? Right? And that's where the emotions kind of come into play. Okay? Because your emotions will either increase your heart rate or slow it down. Okay? So, but that's an action nonetheless, but you haven't seen it. Or people can't see it outwardly. Okay? If they took your pulse, they probably would be able to, right? Okay. And so, actions. And so, this produces a... Our actions produce... Do we know what our actions produce? When we, do, when we carry out actions, what do they produce? Habits. Who said that? Somebody? Habits. habits? That's right. So, habits. Okay? And our habits produce... Character. And our character determines the destiny okay so our thoughts are very important our thoughts are extremely important sister white states i think that's christ triumphant page 188 paragraph three a character formed after the divine likeness is the only treasure that people can take from this world to the next. The character as formed in this world determines one's destiny for eternity. So it's very important that we get the root right. The root to controlling our thoughts is putting the right words in. Now, the word states in Hebrews 10, 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In the Bible, when it talks about hearing, hearing, necessarily, necessarily, hearing basically means that you're actually hearing it and you're acting upon it. Okay? So, faith... We know it's impossible to please God without faith. So really here, 
When you hear something, what is it that you hear concerning God that brings on faith? His word, as it says. As it says, his word, okay, is that which brings faith. Now, looking at the ear, I don't know if you can see that clearly. Um, there's my, uh, here we are. Okay, so we have the outer ear here, and we have the middle ear, and in here we have, sorry, that's, that's the middle ear, and that's the, that's the inner ear. Around this area here, you have what they call the vestibular mechanism, which actually helps with your balance and all that, yeah? Okay, um, this tube along here, it's called the exter um, external auditory canal, which, and this here, is a, a part of the, the drum, what they call the, 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 the drum of the ear, or tympanic membrane, okay? Right, so this is where the sound comes in, hits the ear. There are three bones here. They're called the ossicles, you can see it. Um, and they cause vibrations to travel into this area here, okay? Which is, for, forwards it onto what they call the cochlea, okay? You can see the, the, these are the three, these are the smallest bones in the body, okay? And you've got... The, um, the malleus, the, um, I'm trying to remember what that is now, here we are, it's, oh, that's the head, and then you've got here the, the stapes, and then you've got here the, um, the stirrup, okay, now effective, effectively, what you'll find is that these bones, they vibrate and they cause the vibration of the sound that goes into your ear to go into this area here, and then eventually follows on to the next path here, goes into this area here, the round window, and it travels along this area here, called the cochlea, and then there are little fine hairs, which pick up the vibrations, and as they pick up the vibrations, they actually take the information to the, um, the, the, the brain, to the, um, what they call the cerebrum, okay? And that's where the auditory center resides. You can see here, these are the little hairs that are picked up, pick up the information around here, and they travel, in, this is the cochlea, so they've gone into the um, into the, uh, into the um, vestibular mechanism here, but that's not our concern presently. We're talking about words and sound going through. Okay, but as you can see here, there's a schematic diagram which shows you the, the sound waves traveling in, hitting this area here, the tympanum or the eardrum. Okay, and it travels via these bones here and into the, uh, the cochlea. Okay, and basically takes the message via this mechanism. So that tube that you saw is this, it's cut through. And you can see, you can see the actual um, areas where you have the, the vibration occurring. And this, this area here is where you have those little hairs that pick up the information and take it to the brain. Okay? Now, this is like a, just another schematic diagram of the brain. Okay? We have the frontal lobe. We have um, the parietal lobe here. We have the occipital lobe here. And we have this area here called the temporal lobe. Now, this area here, all right, is called the Brodmann's area. The Brodmann's area is where the sound is picked up. Okay? It's where the sound is picked up and it's interpreted. And as I was mentioning earlier, so I'll just show you, if you can see this here, this diagram here, again, it's the same area. It's, they call it area 41, 42. Brodman area, and this is where the sound, where you pick up your sound, or you, you, you interpret the sound that's coming in through the ear, the sound waves. It's, it's, God's truly amazing. But, you know, and around this area here, again, is where the sound comes in. Now, why am I going through all of this concerning the sound? You see, if we really think about it, yeah, Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. Now, when we take a deep look into the brain, okay, we find that there are all these nerves and neurons and you can see the the messages can you see those messages traveling along traveling along the uh the nerve the neural pathways that was spoken about earlier today okay and when they get to the end of the neural pathway they release a chemical now 
One of these chemicals, there's several chemicals in the, in the brain, in, in the, um, the auditory area, and it's called, one of them's called norepinephrine. Okay, children, can you say norepinephrine for me? Norepinephrine. Okay, can you say it all together? Okay, good, good, good. Some good students here. All right, so norepinephrine is basically one of the chemicals that actually helps you to hear. Okay? It produ it's produced as, as, a, as the vibrations go in, they stimulate the nerves, and the nerves basically, they, they get to this point here, they call it a um, cell body, and it releases a chemical, and it picks up the information, says, oh, I heard you call my name. Okay? So that's, that's how it works. Right? But what I want you to grasp here is that God's word travels into your ear and it produces a substance. Now hope, hope, can you see hope? Why can't you see hope? It's in your mind. You can't see hope necessarily, can you? It's something that you think. But it's saying here that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's only words that you receive to, that can actually give you this hope. That hope is spoken about is a foundation that does not move. That foundation, that's where the word comes from, hypostasis. So faith, and it, that word faith there represents, it's talking about Jesus. So Jesus is that substance, okay, of things hoped for. Jesus doesn't move, he remains the same. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. The evidence of things not seen. So you don't, you haven't seen Jesus. You can see the evidence around you, though. You can see the evidence around you. You can see the evidence around you. And, and so this is what I want you to grasp. The word of God, when it gets into your mind, it gives you hope. Let's have a look at what the Bible says about the word. Gen Genesis 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of God, the word of the Lord, came unto Abram in a vision, saying, fear not. So we know that what God's word here is doing is it's giving Abram Courage. You can't see courage, can you? You can see somebody eventually exhibiting courage by their actions. But what it's saying here is, look, be not afraid. Okay? Fear not. Be of good courage. And that caused Abram to move forward with courage. You see, the words that entered into his mind brought forth the fruit of courage. Okay? I, Abram, I, uh, I am thy shield and thy exceeding, exceeding great reward. So the word is a protector. Proverbs 4 verse 4 says, He taught me also and said unto me. So when somebody says unto you, what are they using? They're using words, right? Okay. Let thine heart retain my word. Keep my commandments and live so here we have now the word of god entering into the mind producing the substance giving you the faith that you need to be able to retain and keep if you keep god's word then you will live you know when you have an apple tree or an apple seed you put the apple seed in the ground the seed has been programmed to produce apples that's what it does. It doesn't do anything else. So when you receive God's word in your mind, you receive the seed of God. And the seed of God produces a particular tree. A tree that is, is basically specific to God's character. Verse 4, it says, get wisdom. Okay? So if you keep hold of these words, you will get wisdom. You will have understanding. Job 28, 28 says, understanding is departing from evil. Okay? 
and you won't forget it. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. So again, the word of God is giving you wisdom, is giving you understanding. Unless you receive these words, you cannot have wisdom, you cannot have understanding. Moving on, Deuteronomy 4 verse 2. Now this one really hit me. This one really hit me. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Deuteronomy 4 2. Now, this is quite serious, this, this word here. In fact, the whole word is serious, but this is quite serious. It's saying that, look, do not add unto the word and do not take anything away from it. Because if you do that, guess what? You won't be keeping my commandments. Okay? You won't be keeping my commandments. But if you hold on to my word, and holding on to it means that whatever happens, you are not going to go from the right or to the left concerning that word. You're going to stay focused. You're going to go straight. But if you add to it, you'll go off. If you take away from it, you'll go off. You've got to adhere to the word of God itself. Again, as I said earlier, it's like an equation. If you go off, if you add that figure that's not supposed to be in that equation, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay? And, you know, just another, because in, in Revelation it talks about, you know, if you add the word, if you add to the word, you'll have the plagues added unto you. Uh, if you take away, you'll have your, your life, uh, the, the, your name taken out of the book of life. You know? This goes a little more deeper than this, I believe. And what the Lord showed me is like, if you say that you're a Christian, you're supposed to be a written epistle of God. Okay? You are supposed to be a manifestation of the words of God. If you do something that's out of character with God's will, you've taken away from his word. You've taken away from his word. And, you, or you've even diminished. Yeah? Sometimes, you know, you, you, might, you might sort of like just leave something out. That's diminishing. You've diminished God's word. And so by that means you have not kept his commandments. Hebrews 2.1 Therefore, we ought to give more earnest, earnest heed to the things which we have heard. What have we heard? We've heard the word of God. The word of God. Give more earnest heed. What does that mean? Earnest heed. When somebody's earnest, what does that mean? Diligent. Diligent. Persistent. Persistent. Any others? Careful. Sorry? Did somebody say something? I, I heard somebody say something, but I didn't quite get what they said. Speak up. Who said that? Clever. Clever. I would say, yeah. I would say you're clever. If you're earnest, giving, giving attention to detail. Okay, so the Lord's saying here, therefore ought ye to give more earnest heed to the things which ye have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. If they slip, then guess what? You slip. Yeah? Psalms 119, sorry, uh, Psalms, 130, Psalms 33 verse 4. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. Psalm 33, 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them, that, that, all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And so all of these words are pertaining to the fact that all these, God's word in and it's, of itself is powerful. Okay? And if we allow these words to enter into our mind, the things that we used to do, we would do them no more because that is the power of the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 6, sorry, 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments 
Even the angels do His commandments. Huh? His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His word. Psalms 119, verse 62, 162. I rejoice at one as one that findeth great spoil or treasure. Now, question. Do we actually recognize and see God's word as treasure? Do we really? Now, be honest, be honest with yourself. Do you really see God's word as treasure? If you saw God's word as treasure, then every word that you receive, you would hold on to it. You wouldn't let go. So if God says, don't steal, and you have a problem with stealing, you're not going to steal because you recognize the value of God's word. Psalm 119 verse 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness. All thy words are righteousness, which means right doing. Psalm 138, verse 2. I will worship toward the holy mountain and, pr- sorry, holy, holy temple, sorry, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy truth, for thy, thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So God exalts his word even above his his name. That's quite serious. His word is exalted above his name. And his name, Yahweh, means self-existent one. He exalts his word above his name. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name. You know, the important thing that I want us to grasp here is this. That if God is going to exalt his word above his name, then really, we should endeavor to follow in that example. Your word should be sure. Your word should be sure. You shouldn't go awry. You shouldn't go astray from what you said. If the, if the word of God is hid in you, if you're keeping God's word, and this is, that's the fruit that's produced by the word of God. Isaiah 8, verse 20, we know this one, but to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Aside from God's word is darkness. Aside from his word is darkness. Isaiah 30, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right, hand and when ye turn to the left the lord gives us direction we have to allow his word to take seat in here in order for us to receive his character we have to receive and you know sometimes you know we say to ourselves oh i've received god's word you know and it's like bridget let's get real man have you really received his word What does it mean to receive his word? What does it mean? What does it really mean to have God's word hid in your heart? Luke 11, 28. But he said, yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. If you look at Romans 7, verse 14. Romans 7, 14 talks about blessing being akin to having iniquity removed from us. But blessed, is, blessed are they that hear the word. Hearing isn't just hearing. Hearing is receiving and doing. As, as, as James says, be not hearers of the word only, but be doers as well. This is what this is saying when it says, those who hear, hear and do the word of God and keep it, they are blessed. Iniquity is removed from them iniquity is removed john 1 1 so here we have it in the beginning the famous in the beginning was the word and the word was was with god and the word was god so here we have it the word jesus is a word 
As it says down here, and and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory. The glory is only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Now let's back it up and see here. But to as many as received him. Received who? Jesus. Otherwise known as the word. As many have received him, to them was given power to be like God to be to exhibit his character this is the only way if we don't receive him we can't do it we won't be able to exhibit God's character it's the word if you take the word in it will produce the seed of the word and you will not you cannot you will not go astray The word, how do we know it? How do we know the word? A couple examples here. Deuteronomy 18, well, how we know the word, first of all, is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20 says, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, Even that prophet shall die. 1821 says, And if if thou say say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? It reads on, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. So, here we are, clearly. The Lord is saying, if my word does what it says it's going to do. That's one way of knowing. That's one way of knowing God's word. Okay? And being sure that God will do whatever he said he will do. The, the word has a separating ability. Just some of the characteristics of the word here. First Kings 13, 18. Now, we know the story about the prophet. Remember the prophet? All right? Um, he basically, um, I'll just read, he says, he said unto him, I am a prophet also thou, as thou art, and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with me, with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is a man of God who, has dis- who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. So, here we have it. We had a prophet who was walking in the way of the Lord. He was walking in the way of the word of the Lord. The word was in his mind. The word was hid. Was hid. Until he made a decision concerning what this false prophet said to him. The false prophet gave him false information. And by that means, he found himself going astray. And he he suffered for it. He, He lost his life. Let this be a lesson to us, saints. Jesus said there are many false prophets that have gone out there. Okay? Be not deceived. How are we not deceived? By the word. The word that God gives us, that is what gives us the ability to know the true from the error. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And, oh sorry, this is the same story. So I've done a, 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 um, it's gone... Uh, we'll move on. That's the same story about this same individual who uh, was, uh, was torn. Okay? Um, but we'll move down. We'll skip down. It says here in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even, asunder, even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So here we have 
the dividing power, the dividing ability of the word of God. Now, some individuals are going to receive the word of God. Those who receive the word of God will remain steadfast and stand on the platform. But those who reject the word of God, even in this text, it, there's a division that happens. A separation that occurs. If you're not standing on God's word, then you're batting for the, you're batting for the enemy. Proverbs 13, 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Now, we know that there's a big time controversy that's going on in our church with regards to prophecy and so on and so forth. But here's the deal. If the word of God says it, then it's true. We have to be students of the word of God. When God says something, if we don't accept it, then we're not going to have power to become sons and daughters of God. <coughs> we will not be able to stand. Because why? We've rejected the word. You call it what you want. You know, the daily, you know, 2520, um, 2300 days, you know, whatever you want, the commandments of God, call it what you will. They're all the words of God. If you reject the word, you know, if you reject the word, then you have rejected Christ. You have rejected God. And if you reject him, you will not have power to become a son or a daughter of the word of God because you haven't believed on his name. John 5, 24. Verily I say unto you, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, this is Jesus speaking clearly, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. All because you've received the word. All because you've received the word. John 4 verse 50. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Because he believed the word of God, his son was healed. This is the power that's enveloped in the word of God. John, 58, John 5, 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him, ye believe not. So if you don't believe that Jesus was the son of God, if you don't believe in his word, if you don't believe in the gospel, even the gospel for this dispensation, in our time, you're none of his. His word isn't abiding in you. His word is not abiding in you. If you are against the word. John 15 verse 3. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So the word of God has a cleansing ability. It cleans you. It makes you righteous. John 17, 17 goes on today. Sanctify them by their truth. Thy word is truth. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying that everybody is really getting this because when you take the word of God, when you take the truth into your mind, you are sanctified. You are made whole. You will not, you will not sin. You will have victory. You will have victory over sin. Not through anything that you've done, but because of who you've invited in. Does this make sense? Who you've invited in. He's the one that gives you the victory over sin. Romans 10 verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
All of this information that we have in the Bible is messages. The whole of the Bible is based upon messages. And we know that messages are made up of? They're made up of words. And the words are that which produce the substance that gives you the hope that you need to recognize and know that God is a reality. Even though you can't see him, the evidence around you is clear and it depicts that he is alive. Romans 10.10, for with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, saints, when you take the word of God into your mind, action follows. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Whatever is in your mind is going to come out. In a, whatever's in it is going to come out. So it brings about action. What we touched on earlier. Now the parable is this. Jesus is explaining to his disciples about the parable of the sower. Right? The seed is the word of God. The seed, that same seed is a seed that's spoken about in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed, the enemy, and her seed. Sorry, yeah, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is how you get the victory. Put the seed in. Whether you're struggling or not in your life, Put the word of God into your mind. Your, your thoughts cause you to follow your actions. Your actions bring about a habit. The habit, a character. And the character, the destiny. Revelation twelve seventeen. This is the same seed. They're speaking about the seed in our day. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's us. Put the seed in, brothers and sisters. Put the seed in. Which keep the commandments of God. And the testimony of Jesus. So you could say, who keep the word of God. And the word of God. Because it's all the word of God. Romans 7 verse 5. For when we were in flesh, the motions of sin, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. This is when we walk carnally. This is when we don't put the word of God into our minds. This is what happens. There's a manifestation of the enemy and because of the manifestation of the enemy, as of the thoughts that are in here, the fruit is death. Colossians 1 verse, 5, 1 verse 5, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Which is come unto you as it is in the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. First Peter, um, First Peter one twenty three, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. John one three, so First John. 3 verse 9 whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him that's if you're earnest if you've truly received the word of God if you've allowed if you've let go of self and you're holding on fully to the Lord that is what the result is and he cannot sin because he is born of God Romans 7 4 Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth 
fruit unto God. So here we have it. Seed brings forth fruit. If you have the right seed, you'll have the right fruit. If you have the wrong seed, clearly, you'll have the wrong fruit. And there will be destruction at your doors. But if not, if it's the opposite, if it's the former, you have life, you have it more abundantly, then you will be saved. Those who walk in the light of Christ reject no message of truth. And the fruit of their acceptance of truth is unity among themselves. Christ is their center. Christ is to them the way, the truth, and the life. But those who simply cry, Christ, Christ, and do not accept the words of Christ, are not partakers of the divine nature, and do not eat of his flesh or drink of his blood. Those who live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God will not, cannot, be at variance, for they are like the many branches that are united to one stock. This is unity that will exist among those in whose hearts Christ is formed, the hope of glory. Those who are united with Christ will have respect unto all God's commandments and will accept the light that shines upon their pathway. We shall, we shall speak in the language of Paul and say, not as though I have already attained either, were, uh, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If I am if I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, brethren, I count not myself to, be, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in any ye sorry, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. If we are doers of God's word, if we're doers of the word of God, we shall be followers of Christ, and our lives will be characterized. Look at that word. There's a see that word in there. Act, act, yeah. How we act, the character, yeah, characterized by holiness in aim, holiness in aspiration, holiness in action, which is progressive sanctification. We shall have Christ like sympathy for all souls, both saints and sinners. But with this experience, there will be no vain boasting. Of, of, sorry, of our sinlessness. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and, fa and the Father by him. Colossians 3.17 Men are greatly under the influence of their own words. You are not conscious how much you are affected by your words. You accustom yourself to speak in a certain way and your thoughts and actions follow your words. One accustoms himself to assert certain things in regard to himself and at last he becomes, sorry, he comes to believe them. Our thoughts produce our words and our words react upon our thoughts. If a man forms a habit of using sacred words reverently, he will form the custom of carefulness of speech, knowing that there is a witness to every word uttered. When the feelings become excited and the speech exaggerated, the mode of speaking is always extreme. It acts and reacts upon ourselves. The word declares, by thy words 
thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. If our words act upon ourselves, they act more powerfully upon others. There is great mischief done by words spoken. God alone knows the measures, the result. So God alone knows and measures the result of a careless, exaggerated mode of speaking. There is much swearing done in spirit. You are reproducing your own character in others. You may express many things that will create in other minds a course of thought which will lead them into false paths. God may spare you the out to outlive your exasperated feelings and come to have sensible thoughts. You may outlive your doubts and through repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ escape from the snare of the fowler. You may pass into the sunshine of faith, but oh, you may never be conscious that the, these words are doing their mischievous work in the soil of the hearts of others and poisoning it. Here is a harvest some must reap. Raise the standard of Christ Jesus and have all your words select, seasoned with salt. Cultivate true dignity. Let your words feel the influence of the converting power of God. Let wholesome words be spoken. You know, the Lord really is patient with us and long-suffering to us would, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. As I say to myself, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength. Gladness gleaming to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold up faith's lamp, he'll throw a Savior's near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, 
O my steps enlighten, teach me the dangers of these realms below. That lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten, that light will own the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining, Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Let's pray. <clears throat> Loving Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your word. Help us, Lord, to truly receive your word, to live by your word. Give us the power that we need. Help us to hold earnestly to the things that you have said so that we will not slip or allow them to slip. May we have a confidence in your word knowing that just as a seed of a fruit produces that fruit that the fruit of your word the fruit of the seed of the word of God will produce the fruit that you said it would produce and that is eternal life not for us alone but all those that look forward to and love your appearing we ask these things in Jesus name amen